Hi, I'm Brad Grissom. I'm uh, going to show you what I learned in uh, replacing the brake rotors on a 1995 Honda Accord. I had a lot of questions when I started and I really didn't know how this all fit together so I've learned a lot and I'd like to share that. Uh, this should apply to all fifth generation Honda Accords uh, which is 1994 through 1997 I believe. Um, and this is a, a trapped rotor type configuration which I didn't know about before I started this project. It means that uh, the rotor is trapped between the the hub and the knuckle and it's not easy to replace your brake rotors like I was hoping it would be. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, start showing you. I, I have, uh, have it uh, loosely fit together here so that I can show you how it, it fits together to get a good visual. I know when I was starting this project I had no idea visually how it all fit together so let's take a look at that. This is um, everything kind of put together. This is what it will look like when you take it off your car. You've got the hub out here, your, uh, the studs on the end here. One of mine was busted. I'll talk about that in a minute. We've got the rotor inside pressed in here. We've got the, uh, the uh, bearing. And then here's the lower ball joint. So this is what it will look like when you take it off your car. Um, I was really confused initially what to do on how to press this out. I did get access to a press, but, but I wasn't sure which parts and where I, need, where I needed to support it. So what I ended up doing was taking, if, if this acts as an example of um, some of the, the supports on your press, I had a large uh, piece of angle iron. So the angle iron would have been uh, like this and up. It was, it was quite large and thick and heavy duty. So it's a big piece of angle iron which I stuck to support on this side and the press was uh, had arms sitting here to support it. So this was going across and holding it up on this side. Um, and I needed something to, to hold it up on this side as well because basically what we want to do is we want to support this knuckle portion because everything else is connected and we want all of that to, to push here down and separate it from from the knuckle portion. So you need something on this side and something on this side. What I ended up doing on this far side was was taking a support and putting some extra uh, layers of support beneath it because this is higher than where this sits. And if you just put them level, it would sit like this. And and when you press down, it would that would not be good. You want the, the force to be directly down. So I ended up having a support here and a support here with um, some extra pieces under here to raise this up. Now you want to clamp it all together because if you're pressing down on all of this, this may shoot off. So that can be pretty dangerous. So I, I had this support under here and I had clamps that would hold it this way from this, to keep this from shooting off. Okay, so well, let's take a look at what this is. Uh, technically, I did not reala realize this at the time. This bearing is actually not pressed into this knuckle. I thought it was a, a really tight press fitting. It turns out it's not. It's fairly loose uh, compared to a press fitting. Really, all that's holding it in is these four bolts um, and a lot of rust. So I thought it was pressed in on mine because it was so hard to, to, uh, to separate. When I had it on the press and it, it finally gave when I was cranking on it, uh, it sounded like a gunshot and uh, apparently that's pretty normal when things are rusted together, together pretty well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, it's all just fit together now so I should be able to take it apart and separate it pretty quickly. So this just should, now that it's all cleaned, I've cleaned all the mating surfaces, notice it just pops off. That's because that is not a press fitting. So if we look in here, this is fairly, um, fairly rusted up initially. I cleaned it out quite a bit. But uh, this should, in theory, just drop right on there like that. So um, that's this fitting here. And it's hard to mistake this fitting. Um, because this has a very smooth uh, side on the bearing so it makes sense that 
it fits in there. You'll see when I take it apart that the, the other side couldn't possibly fit in there. So there's really only one way to piece this together. So assuming now that you've pressed this off, uh, the next uh, goal is to how to get your bearing off. So this is the hub which is bolted with these bolts here to your brake rotor and then this is your this is your uh, wheel bearing. So let's let's unbolt the brake rotor here. Now of course this is all going to be rusted in on your on your vehicle. It was on mine. Um, I had to use my impact uh, wrench to 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 separate those because they're pretty well rusted in. Okay, so how this works is now you can take off your um, your brake rotor. So just you can take that off and, and get it out of the way. Um, uh, one thing to note when I when I had this when I was pressing this part off, I um, it just so happened the press I was using was just about the perfect size without any special attachments um, and it fit right right about this size on the the somewhat inner uh, ring here to, to just push it out and it looked like this when I had it separated now knowing that when you've gone this far just replacing your brake rotors is is you, well you could do that that's all I wanted to do but you, you might as well replace uh, your wheel bearing because you've got it all apart. So the next thing I wanted to do was separate this hub from this wheel bearing and I was thinking I might need some special attachments for that which you can purchase that kind of sit under here and support this and then you press just on this um, actually I'm trying to think of what I did then you press in here and that would separate this bearing from your hub now I didn't have any special attachments so what I ended up doing now note that I was going to replace my brake rotors anyway so I used my old brake rotor to do this but you can set this um, in here over the hub let it fit under twist it so that it lines up beneath there now all of a sudden that's an incredibly good support that you can put this on your press like this and press down through here to um, remove this whole bearing from the hub. So that's how I did it. Now you would not want to do this on a new uh, rotor because I fear that it might warp the rotor which would be really bad. So that's one trick for how to remove this. Now since this is pressed on I can't exactly show you um, but here's what happened. I'll use this um, uh, toilet paper roll as an example. Let's Let's pretend that this is removed and I just have the hub sitting in my hand like this. Here's the wheel stud sticking out and, and here's the bottom of it. What, it. what it looked like when it pressed off was this whole thing pulled off and it left the inner race up to the bearing. So this was stuck. It was pressed in like this. And now that's pressed in, that's very tough fitting. Um, and this whole piece, this is the old bearing, this whole piece came off. So this is what the old bearing looks like when, it, when you press it off. Now uh, Eric the car guy has some great car videos on YouTube and he showed uh, a really good technique for removing this. One problem is getting this race off, it doesn't have any really good, um, doesn't have any good uh, lips on here that you can grab with a puller of any sort. Initially what I tried was taking a cutting wheel um, and and cutting some notches in the sides. So I took a cutting wheel, assuming this is a pneumatic air, you know, air powered cutting wheel. I cut in here. You can see where that's sort of cut in. And I cut in on the opposite side here. And I tried to use just the regular two jaw uh, or two sided uh, puller to try and take that and pull it up but that really did not work because it's you can't grip very well here it was just not working for me at all so that, that's when I found Eric the car guy's video and he his technique was to take it 
And as you can see I've done here, uh, you're going to end up destroying the race, so, you know, obviously you're, you'll be replacing this with a new bearing. But you take your cutting wheel, and you cut in at an angle, like this. So you cut that away. Um, as far as, it, you don't want to cut too far into the, into the hub, but uh, cut down a ways, and then you take a, um, a some sort of a screwdriver or, or something, some sort of a big hammering implement, and you want to pound at that, and it should break it apart, like a big chisel or something. Um, and that's exactly what I did. So you might notice, too, uh, that there's this crack here. Um, and on this one, I did cut a little bit too far, and I did start to scrape the hub just a little bit, but it's just a little blemish. It should be okay. Um, so that's how I removed the race. So, uh, next, you want to uh, press on the new, the new bearing. And the way I did that is, uh, by looking at the factory service manual, it was very unclear to me how to, exactly which part to press on. I didn't want to damage anything on the new bearing. So I wasn't sure if I should be pressing here on the outside, uh, to slide it on, or if I should be pressing only on this inner ring or somewhere in between. But according to the factory service manual, um, it shows their special attachment as only pressing on this uh, sort of inner ring area. It was not pressing on the outside. So the, the press that I was using, I found an, an attachment that was about that size um, that covered, you know, this sort of inner ring. It was and I put a little bit of grease, as Eric the car guy shows as well, I put a little grease on the mating surfaces on the hub and on the, the bearing, and I pressed it down on this inner part and it, it worked like a charm. Then from there it's, it's pretty easy. Um, you just put your rotor on and do the, the opposite of, of the assembly, just like the car manuals say. Uh, so you bolt your rotor back on there, and then if you've cleaned these surfaces, this should fit right back on, and you put your bolts in, and you're done. So hopefully, hopefully that'll help uh, some people visualize what's involved, and of course, uh, be safe, wear eye protection, be really careful with that press. Um, at the shop I was in, they have stories of people shooting things off of the press and it can be very dangerous. So if you don't know what you're doing, get some help uh, and be safe. And this is just my take on things. I'm not a professional car mechanic or anything like that. Uh, I just wanted to share what I've learned. Thanks.